In today's video, we're going to be teaching you the most reliable method of paying yourself first, which is integral for having first control of your personal finance. Paying yourself first simply means saving money for things that you need and deserve in life. The best way to do this is to automate your savings so that way you don't ever have to worry about saving your money. The first step to automating your savings is to open up a savings account with an online bank. The reason for this is that online banks tend to have higher interest rates whenever compared to retail banks, giving you much more for every dollar that you have in that account. A great online bank to start with is Capital One using their 360 savings account. After you've opened an account, you have the option to create categories within that amount so that way you can save up for different things. For example, you could end up creating a category to buy a pet dog, but in this video, we're going to give you five of the major categories to save up for that will give you both happiness and wealth the quickest. The first category that you want to open is for retirement. Regardless of your financial situation, this is the category that should have the biggest portion of your savings allotted to. It's arguably the most important frugal living tip so as to ensure that your financial future is secure. And by starting early and saving a little bit every week, your account can grow massively very quickly. The second category will be a general savings and emergency fund. This category is going to be used to ensure that you'll be covered if any emergencies happen, such as paying for medical expenses, fixing your car, or even losing your job. It's also useful if you're looking to purchase big ticket items. Ideally, you're going to want to be able to put a small fraction of your savings to allow you to survive between three to six months without income. The third category is travel and hobby funds. Whenever it comes to paying for yourself for your first and frugal living, it is important to find time to pay for things that you enjoy. However, it can become really easy to overspend, and that's why having a dedicated savings account for travel and hobbies is a great way to be able to keep your spending under control. The amount to place in this category should be about the same as your emergency fund. The fourth category to open is a car fund. If you've been eyeing a vehicle that you're willing to save for, then this account can help you get there. Cars are in fact the second biggest expense that befall the average American, so it's typical to be able to put enough money into your account so as to get a down payment within a reasonable amount of time and give you any reserve cash to make your monthly lease payments. The fifth category is to open a house fund. Houses are the biggest expense that any person has to pay, so it's only natural to have a house fund to be able to afford it. A big chunk of your savings should be placed into a house fund, so that way you can put down at least 20% down on the home that you like. This will help to ensure that you won't have to pay huge amounts for your mortgage every month, so that way you can live happily and comfortably. It may seem redundant to split your savings into five categories, but it is vital if you're looking to build your wealth and manage your personal finances in the very best way possible. Firstly, having your savings automated into these five categories will mean that you never have to worry about having enough for retirement, that dream car, a new house, or your yearly ski trip, or even for emergencies. Having your savings split means that everything's already taken care of and you don't have to think twice about it. Secondly, whatever you have in your checking account, which is where your money goes to, is money that you know that you can spend for yourself or whatever bills that you have to pay. You no longer have to keep track of paying yourself, which makes budgeting your busy life that much easier. Thirdly, it gives you a direct insight if you've got enough money for what you're saving for. For example, if you want to buy the newest Mercedes, all you got to do is look at your savings account to see if you have enough for a down payment. If not, then you need to continue saving up until you do. Now, if you're worried that the savings amount annual yield is a little too low for your liking, then you can consider transferring some categories to a brokerage account so as to invest in various stocks. While being much riskier, they do average a sum return of about 6% a year as opposed to 2% from an online bank. However, this is only an average over the long term, so it's best to be able to make sure that the only savings account that you move to a brokerage or long-term savings fund, like a house fund, car fund, a retirement, and not the short-term savings like your general emergency fund. The problem with returns from the stock market is that they vary a lot from year to year. So, for example, you may have $3,000 initially, and within a year that may drop to $2,700 or grow up to $4,000. This can be a real big issue with savings that are designated for things like emergencies where you need to access that money instantly. As a rule of thumb, if you're planning on using that money in under five years, then it should stay in your savings account. If you plan to invest over five years, then it can be placed in a brokerage account for a much higher annual return rate.